Hey friends, welcome to Boca, a podcast exploring the ever blurring lines between the personal and business lives of professional photographers. This is your host, Nathan Holritz, and I'm happy that you can join me today in connecting with photographers and entrepreneurs as we discuss photography, business, and oh yeah, that sometimes messy thing that we call life. This podcast is brought to you by Photographer's Edit, custom image editing for the wedding and portrait photographer. Just visit photographersedit.com. All right, Boca Podcast listeners, we are back for another episode. And I have to say, I'm, I'm genuinely excited already. Heather Jackson, who is my guest today and a new friend, uh, and I have already been delving into conversation and going every which way. Uh, so I'm excited <laughs> about our conversation today, Heather. Thank you so much for making time for the Boca Podcast. Oh man, thanks for having me on. It's such an honor. Absolutely. And and I have to say off the bat, I know that you, you've already told me you don't take compliments well, but I was complimenting you before <laughs> we started. I was kind of giving you context as to why I even asked you to come on the podcast in the first place. I, I'm just really enamored by your work. It's beautiful, beautiful couples portraiture, uh, romantic portraiture. And, and the way that I'm, I think I'm going to even title this for the episode is, is With an Edge. Um, an intimate oh. edge that is just, it's, it's appealing. It's beautiful to look at. Um, I really love what you're doing. And so that really is what started this, this whole episode in the first place. It's just my uh, appeal or your appeal, I should say your work's appeal. And um, so I really appreciate you kind of putting that out there to the world and, and letting us in on it. It's really gorgeous. And I'll just go ahead and tell our listeners off the bat um, if you are, uh, not if, because you're on Instagram, you're going to want to go take a look at Jackson takes photos. So it's jackson.takes.photos on Instagram. And of course, we'll link to this in the show notes, Boca, B-O-K-E-H podcast.com. You're going to want to make sure you go check out Heather's work. It's, it's really wonderful. And I'll go ahead and mention too, her website is the same thing, jacksontakesphotos.com. We'll also link to that in the show notes. But um, Heather, I, again, I appreciate you making time to chat with us today. And let, we're just going to get into it because I know based on our conversation before I hit the record button, we could probably spend like two or three hours talking, which I love. <laughs> yeah. But I also want to respect your time. So let's just dive in. The first thing that we normally talk about in the podcast these days is something called a technique for time. And so much of the podcast is about working efficiently as photography business owners so that we can do more than just photography or do more than just sit in front of the computer. And so I'm curious how you would go about doing that for yourself as a photography business owner. Do you have a tip or a trick or something that you do in your workflow? Well, yeah, this was a tough one. And I automatically, as soon as I saw this question, was like, oh, I haven't been doing a very good job of this lately. <laughs> well, I, but I appreciate your honesty in that too. So tell me what the struggle is. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like as a business owner, I don't have any assistants. I don't have anyone I work with besides my assistant photographers, but they have nothing to do with my business outside of showing up on the wedding day yeah. um, and working with me. Yeah. It's just, you know, you're, you're your own marketer, you're your own everything. Mostly giving really quality attention to my clients is the most important thing to me. And I am, I'm an introverted extrovert. I don't know. I, I, I'm very loud and obnoxious sometimes and I have a lot of energy and also it's it takes a lot of energy for me to give quality conversation and attention to my clients it takes a lot of my energy yeah. so knowing that and and scheduling time for that knowing that it will exhaust me um, or maybe that's not the right word but knowing that it's going to take my emotional energy but that is the most important thing is my clients and and making sure they feel taken care of other than that, it is quality time with my family versus quantity. So like you said, we don't, we don't have a lot of time as business owners. So I want to make sure that the time mm. I set aside for my family and my boyfriend is no cell phones. Um, I know that's pretty cliche, but I can't, I can't handle the cell phone usage when we're all trying to just hang out. No stressful talk, definitely no political talk or business talk unless it's on positive notes and lots of laughter, lots of gameplay yeah. and you know, quality, mm. quality conversation about things that really matter. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm actually, I have your Instagram page pulled up right now and your profile photos, you laughing yeah. genuinely. <laughs> and you, you say something about laughter. It's so huge. I mean, I, I am an admittedly, um, I don't know if serious, probably serious, maybe uptight is a better descriptor, an uptight individual who probably needs to laugh way more than, than I already do. Uh, there is something so, it brings such a release, you know, to be able to go from running a business, which can be kind of serious or stressful, certainly time consuming, as you're describing, 
and, and to be able to just let go a bit and laugh is it's the best thing. And um, I, I I could stand to learn to do more of that. I'm I am learning to do. I'm doing better at it. But I, I love the genuineness of that that profile picture. And it's so true. We need to take the time to just chill out and laugh a bit. And you know you mentioned the thing about the phone. It may be cliche, but honestly, you see everybody doing it. Everybody's on their phone constantly. And as much as it is a an extremely powerful tool, we enjoy it certainly for business and for entertainment and communication. Um, at the end of the day, it's good to take our eyes off that thing and look at the person in front of you and have a conversation or look at the scenery around you and appreciate that. Um, I, I, there is, as cliche as it may be, I think it can't be mentioned enough. So I'm glad that you bring that up again as well. Amidst the busyness, I'm also curious, though, what's a way maybe that you've learned to be a bit more centered, more present, more focused, despite all of the noise around you? Yeah, I mean, the first thing I have written down here is, yeah, limiting the internet usage um, because we're photographers. Mm. We're constantly on our computers, um, either editing or looking for inspiration or marketing. And I, I'm not going to curse and I, I'm, I'm going to say, do something else. And I want to put it, be, I want to put the <laughs> F word in front of that. Um, do something else, anything yeah. else, go enjoy the world yeah. in front of you, the tangible world. And I don't want to, I'm not like hating on anyone who's super wrapped up in their cell phones. People love social media and I do too, especially in the last year. I've lost some friendships and I've lost some family members. And for me, that was just this catalyst into Mm. really being present and owning what I want my life to look like. And that is definitely not being buried inside my cell phone every day. Uh, That, I mean, that's, you you summed that up beautifully. And uh, again, there there is, as you say, there's really nothing wrong per se with the device itself. It's just a question of how we use it and maybe uh, how obsessively you, we use it is, is more specific. But you have to. We we we. There's no way around it. Absolutely no way around being on your cell phone and being on your your computer. So I guess just really knowing how to limit that is has been my focus lately. Hmm. Well, you know, and it made me think too, as you were talking, uh, this is as as organized and as structured as I can be. And as much as I run a podcast that centers largely around this topic, the thing that I still have to work at to do better at is kind of what you're describing where I'm going to going online, Uh, you know, whether it's the actual internet on my, on my, my laptop, or I'm going to social media, or I'm going to YouTube or whatever it might be. If I'm going to that almost habitually, the question that I would want to ask myself, uh, and I would encourage our listeners to ask themselves as well, is what what are you trying to compensate mm-hmm. for? What is that behavior? What's the root of that behavior? What are you compensating for? What are you trying to cover up? What are you setting aside in place of doing that? Are you avoiding doing something difficult? Are you avoiding a difficult conversation? What's at the root of that behavior? Because we can say all day long, set our, our phones aside, take some time to, to be present. And yet, if we have that tendency I would still, I would ask why, and I would certainly do that for myself. And I would encourage our listeners to do that because I think it's healthy to understand, to be self-aware, to understand the psychology that drives our behavior. And then that makes it easier to, to change behavior as well. So not, I don't want to get overly deep here, but I, I think you're bringing up some really interesting points of conversation. Let's go a little bit different direction though. What's one of the most impactful books that you've read? Oh goodness. Um, I thought about this one a lot, but the, the one that kept coming to mind is Dale Carnegie's how to win friends and influence people. hundred percent. When I was worried before I became, well, I mean, I've always been a photographer, full-time photographer, but I had other jobs. One of them being an SDO, uh, creative director. So in that job, learning mostly about SEO and how to really deal with my clients, the guy I was working under at the time re- recommended that book to me. And I read it begrudgingly at first, thinking that he was just trying to teach me a lesson. (laughs) (laughs) But it was very much a lesson I needed to know. Um, And the title of the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, sounds so, I don't know, like it sounds maybe negative at first. Hmm. But really, it's a book about, to me, learning how to listen, how to just shut up <laughs> and listen, yeah. which at 22 ish was a lesson I needed to learn. Um, it did me a lot of good. Well, and the book was written, what, like a hundred years ago or 80 years ago? Something oh my like gosh. That? Yeah. 80. Yeah. 80 years ago. And it's so they, they rewrote it to be more modern, but they, it's totally applicable. And Absolutely. anyone who like me struggled a little bit more with 
really connecting with people and running my business in a very professional but also personable way. It's it's incredible. Just really tactful lessons on how to, like I said, just shut up and listen and how to deal with people in the way that they want to be dealt with. Yeah, it's it's funny. Like as as we get, uh, we'll call it fancier and fancier with all our technology as as time progresses. The reality is that the basic components of a healthy human relationship or even a good conversation, they don't really change, you know. And I, I still, I think I mentioned this the other day in an episode um, that one of the the things that sticks out to me from that book is it, he talks about Dale Carnegie talks about the significance of someone's name. And it's funny how mm-hmm. a lot of times you engage with somebody, you don't necessarily call them by name to actually hear your own name. I mean, I don't know. I, I'll speak from personal experience to hear somebody actually call me by name and engage me in, in what feels at times even like an, an, an intimate manner by actually mm-hmm. using my name and paying attention to me and looking me in the eye. That in and of itself can can create a lasting impression because you're not used to being engaged that way in 2019. So uh, it's funny how those basic things can make such a big difference in our relationships, but we'll definitely link to that book. It's a great book in the show notes, again, bocapodcast.com. And for those of you listening in, if you don't take advantage of those show notes, make sure that you go check them out as soon as possible. Haley does a great job of putting together resources from each of these episodes. It's a Boca podcast, B-O-K-E-H podcast.com. Uh, how long have you been a professional photographer? And talk to us a little bit about the backstory. Well, I've been shooting professionally, as in getting paid for it, since I was 19. Wow. So around college, um, I started as a sports photographer. And Badfish Stand Up Paddle was the first company to really hire me as a professional photographer and believe in me and pay me. They were amazing. I would definitely want to give them a shout out. Mike Harvey and Zach Hughes, they were on that company. And they're based out of the Colorado small board company. And I've worked for them for years. And until I became a photographer or a wedding photographer, they were really the basis of starting off as a sports photographer and working for other sports companies from there. Hmm. And that just spread. I mean, it's crazy how opportunity comes to you when you want it and you seek it and you take it. Yeah, that sports career took me many different places all over the country and Canada, Costa Rica, Nicaragua. Wow. We made a women's surf film, indie surf film that got nominated for movie of the year by a fairly noticeable uh, magazine in California called Stand Up Paddle Magazine, Sup the Mag. And yeah, it was great. And then probably about three years, four years ago. I got, uh, I just got bored, Hmm. I guess is maybe the way of saying it. Um, I was no longer feeling fulfilled and I needed to change. And I started taking more intimate portraits of the uh, athletes that I was working with. And then realizing that, you know, you have this moment of like, oh, well, really what I'm doing is just portraiture. So why don't I dive more into that? And couples and, you know, weddings kind of followed something that I had always avoided because, I don't know. I always had this like vision that dealing with brides would be not a good thing. Some, somehow very stressful um, weddings, being a wedding photographer. And I kick myself for avoiding it for all these years because I, I love it. It's very fulfilling and definitely my calling. And I wake up every day feeling super blessed to do what I do. Well, but you've you've taken the, the cliche out of wedding photography because I, I think about wedding photography, at least in years past, the, the connotation that it carried was um, you know, kind of bottom of the food chain. It was something that you did if you had to. And then it began to turn into this, uh, quote, rock star world, which was kind of hilarious in and of itself. We, that that phase kind of came and went. And I think there's at least a little bit more balanced perspective in, in some regards now. But uh, there, you've taken the cliche out of wedding photography that the variety in the style of portraiture that you create, not only for um, those who have wedding garb on, but also for those who don't, is is wonderful. It's intimate. It's warm. We're going to get into a little bit about how you create that later on. But I, I'm I certainly am glad that you made that transition, and uh, I think it'll be a great inspiration for our listeners as well. What would you say though in this time frame that you've had a photography business is one of the most important pieces of? Well, I, I guess what what would be the most important piece of advice really that you could give to somebody based on what you've learned during these last few years, what comes to mind? Yeah. When I, Oh God. (laughs) (laughs) 
the endless list. Um, I guess the most important thing that I can look back and be like, oh, I wish, uh, believe in yourself, like really believe in yourself in the final goal, in the, in the dream, um, which is again, just feels so cliche coming out of my mouth. But like I spent, I spent way too much time not really fully believing in my vision for my business mm. and not really knowing if it could be done when it doesn't really matter uh, if you know. There, no one ever knows anything. There's never a guarantee. So to just go for it and basically dropping the hammer on yourself. And what I mean by that is at some point you find yourself between a rock and a hard place where it's either do or die. Either you do this and you make your business or you go back to working your desk job and you don't look back hmm. because your family is sick of you teetering back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there is that. You know, it's it's funny you you say that that you never know. I, I really I, I totally agree with you. I mean, there's one of the things that's cracked me up um, being an owner and and certainly the founder of of a company like Photographers Edit, and I have business partners now, and you know we, we have staff and so forth. And one of the things that that's cracked me up about learning this process of of owning a a company that's larger than just the the sole proprietorship that I owned as a photographer is forecasting. Um, because when you when you begin to look into like what is the company going to make and what are the numbers going to look like in, on this month and in this month and then six months from now and a year from now, and the reality is you don't know. It's it's a it's a guessing game in some ways. I mean, you can make some projections based on past client behavior and and the trends and and looking at data, but at the end of the day, it seems like a lot of the work that we do as business owners is in some ways guesswork, and at some point you just have to go for it. Well, the paralysis is real. <laughs> yeah, oh, no question, no question. But I guess, like, what is it? Yeah. What, what is it that made you just take the leap and go for it? When you talk about believing in yourself, um, make that really practical, tangible. What did that look like? I mean, surround. I guess my next thing would be to surround yourself with people who really believe in you um, okay. and will push you when you feel like the road gets tough and you don't want to keep going. Because yeah. I, I'm incredibly lucky to have my mother. She always supported me emotionally, mentally, financially, physically. She was always there to tell me I was being an idiot when I felt like giving up having, and I have friends like that, you know, but having really having those people that you can lean on and text and tell them like, yo, this is, this is hard. I want to give up. And then being like, absolutely not. Mm. And here's why that's, that's really, really good. But believing in yourself it takes action. So, but really that's just a thought process, right? Like thoughts create words, creates action. It's all just that it teeters down the line. So if you can just sit and and imagine yourself in these final, I I guess I'm talking about manifestation really. Yeah. In some ways. Yeah, (laughs) for sure. If you can imagine yourself in your final goal, if you can imagine what you really want and be in that, that creates your motivation, that creates your action, which creates your success it just does Mm. even when things seem beyond impossible like I remember when we started filming that movie and I won't go down this road but it was it seemed absolutely impossible and then when it was done and getting recognition and you're on the other side looking at how all these really small steps these small daily actions that maybe in the moment seemed absolutely grinding really just led to your ultimate success in the end, which, you know, I mean, that's just life is going after it day after day, hoping and praying that it'll, it'll work out. And you know what, it's, it's probably gonna 98% of the time. Yeah. A lot of times it's amazing. Just, just doing it is, is what makes all the difference in the world. Sure. You may have to course correct a little bit here and there along the way in order to make it happen. But there's so many people that talk about doing something and never do it for one reason or one excuse or another, a lot of times it's just about doing it. So I, I love that encouragement for our listeners. Talk to us a little bit about your photography business because, I mean, there, there are, let's be honest, a lot of wedding photographers out there. How do you set your business apart, whether it's in your market locally or, or, or nationally? What is your business's brand position? Wow. Well, that's changed a lot. And okay. I think it does, you know, right? Like we always continue to, uh, you know, develop and evolve how we want our business to look and yeah. what actually matters to us. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's happened to me in the most years is actually realizing what I thought was important is not actually what's important to me. Being that 
what I thought was important, building my business as quickly as possible, you know, making money, being, you know, as stable and successful as possible, as quickly as possible is not at all what I want. I want to connect with my clients, which actually means not necessarily turning away people, but only really connecting with and giving my attention to people I know are going to appreciate my work and who will want to work with me, hmm. creating a unique experience for those people. Does that make sense? Not taking on every single client you come across. I carry entire trips for my couples. Sometimes we'll spend weekends, wow. you know, out in some awesome destination. And that means we shoot, you know, several hours in a day, but it's more casual than just trying to bang out like an hour session um, with all these, you know, prompts and stuff, which is, you know, how most photographers go about it. And right. that's great. But I would rather maybe charge a little bit more and then really give them an experience to where I'm delivering photos that they are looking at and, and really connecting with. Yeah. Your, your Instagram page says love stories plus adventure. And it seems like that sums it up pretty well based on what you're describing and certainly the images that are in your Instagram feed, that combination of adventure. I mean, the idea of actually creating a trip for your, your couples and setting the whole scene for the session sounds incredible. Yeah, it's again, I can't believe people pay me to do this sometimes, <laughs> 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 which I'm sure is how a lot of photographers feel. But it's no, it's great. And it's it's a business model that has developed, you know, in the last year or so where I'm realizing more what's important to me and, and the, the experiences and the clients that I really want to have. And it's amazing that when you actually dive into that and focus on that, how those experiences are what will come to you more often than anything else. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about how you actually get clients who are willing to be photographed the way that you photograph them because it's, it's not certainly not the norm um, these are very intimate portraits yeah. <laughs> at times and uh, so we'll get into those details here in just a little bit i'm curious though what's in your gear bag what's a favorite item in your gear bag these days an accessory a camera body a lens uh, or something else sometimes i think i have too much gear um <laughs> <laughs> i have a sigma so i'm just gonna read off my lenses there's only a, i guess there's really not that many i have a sigma 50 fixed art lens yeah a canon 70 to 200 a 30 a canon 35 and a canon 24 to 70 um i have two flashes canon flashes i have a water housing um that i've used you know for my sports years but i've actually started to bring more into my wedding photography and couples photography which is fun that's cool and then um yeah my wonder boom my music box that can't go anywhere without and did you call it a, a wonder boom isn't that what it's called oh gosh am i like dating myself <laughs> like I have those no tiny idea. little like kind of waterproof okay Oh, I didn't know if it was like, yeah, a, I, I didn't know if it was a brand or you just, so it's a reference to just like a small Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the brand. I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. Awesome. Take, take music with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally curious now. I'm going to have to look it up and we'll link to it in the show notes. If, if that is a brand, that's, that's really great. Yeah. There's really something that makes it, that there's a difference that music can make. Um, and I think I've, maybe I've told this story on the, on the podcast before, but I did a, a boudoir session for a client. She, she and her husband were a wedding client. And then she reached out to me and had this very specific image in mind for uh, a boudoir port, or I'm sorry, not a boudoir, but it was a, um, I say boudoir because it was similar in some ways, but a maternity session, which was a nude maternity session. And uh, she had this very particular look in mind and I'll tell you that, you know, photographing a session like that, um, especially if it's not the norm uh, for you as a photographer and certainly for the client not used to being photographed that way, music can can really set or help ease the environment. And it really made a difference. And then ultimately it became humorous, too, because at one point she wanted this this cloth draped over her her naked body and the, the the wind kind of blowing the cloth back over her. So we're standing, I'd, I'd set up a backdrop in her kitchen and we're using window light from that was kind of coming into the kitchen. And her husband was underneath the, the Island with a gas leaf blower and, and we've, and the music was probably playing in the background at this point too. I mean, this scene is hilarious and I wish I, I wish I had a picture to, to an actual picture to, to capture it. Um, absolutely hilarious. But all that to say, music can really help set the tone in, in all kinds of different ways. And I'm, I'm sure, especially Any, for your couple's portrait work. Anything for the shot, right? Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, it was. And the session just turned out beautifully. We got all kinds of, of just beautiful portraits and, and she was really, really great to work with. But 
Uh, yeah, music can make a big, big difference in that. Let's talk about your work, though. Um, and I've already alluded to it, and I, I don't want to embarrass you by going on and on about it, but it's it's really, mm-hmm. truly gorgeous. It's, it's warm, it's romantic, mm-hmm. and of course, the intimate piece that, that we mentioned, we've alluded to a couple of times. And again, for those of you listening in, you're going to want to to just go to Instagram.com slash Jackson dot takes dot photos. And again, we'll link to this in the show notes. You're going to want to take a look at, at Heather's work. It's really, really beautiful. But let's let's get into the process of it. Before we do, though, what was the motivation to kind of going in this particular direction? You mentioned taking portraits, more specifically intimate portraits. So it seemed like a, a good segue into this work. But what led you to kind of pushing beyond the norm, if you will, and and really creating an intimate uh, and and certainly a very romantic portrait of these couples that you work with. Gosh, I want to have some like super f- profound answer to that. I think that I started off, you know, I, being a sports photographer, I think motion, you know, really candid motion shots mm-hmm. came pretty naturally to me when I came into couples photography and then adding in the emotion, getting more comfortable trying to curate that for my couples which as a photographer, you absolutely have to do. You are trying to make them comfortable kissing in front of you, <laughs> which is an awkward experience for anyone sometimes. Yeah. So yeah, I guess on a real level, life is short. And why bleep around with capturing anything other than truly authentic moments that, you know, I don't think people realize how much photography actually means to them until mm. they're opening the gallery email I sent to them and reliving the laughter and happiness that they felt in the session that we had all over again. And then immediately wanting to share it with their partners and their loved ones and the world, you know, on mm-hmm. social media mm-hmm. and feeling this sense of like pride. And, you know, when you're looking at fo- your photographs online and you can't help but smile, I mean, like yes. that's me when I'm editing, yeah. you know, like that's, I'm sure that's most photographers when they're editing is you can't help but just feel that emotional attachment. I very quickly got addicted to that early on uh, when I switched to wedding and couples photography. And that's, I just wanted to focus on that, just only delivering, you know, we have to have those for lack of a better term, mom images, you know, where it's just you know, a really nice portrait where everyone's looking in the same direction and smiling. But yeah, really, your, your mom probably doesn't like maybe that that she doesn't want a picture of her son in the bathtub with his her, her son's well, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who wants that? And they don't even know they want it until they see it and they see themselves in this photo that they kind of only imagined on social media with other models or whatever and then all of a sudden they see themselves in that position and they don't even know how much they appreciated that until it's it's in their hands yeah well and and we're going to get into again this this process in just a second but you mentioned you're alluding to the the raw emotion of the photo a photo that captures reality for the couple and i actually have one in particular pulled up uh, on your instagram feed from back in september september 8th specifically and it's this couple that is just playing um, and there it looks like kind of a dining room area on a hardwood floor. And the girl is just laughing hilariously. It looks like he may be tickling her, but it's extremely raw. You know, that's not a fancy background. It's all about the couple and their interaction and the raw emotion. And that, that was honestly, that was my favorite thing as a photographer, especially when it came to engagement sessions. Give me, I want good light and raw emotion and I don't care. I can, I can photograph in a Walmart parking lot if I have to, I'm going to get a great image when I have those two components, but there's something so wonderful about raw emotion. And you see that so much in your work. It's really incredible. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I want to have some profound answers to how I create those images, but it's mostly just coming up with prompts that allow really general prompts to like nothing specific that allow these couples to forget that you're there Mm. for even an instant. And I guess the other thing I want to tack onto that is (sighs) with emotional, Images like that, really true, raw, authentic images. It's not photoshopped. I'm not going to photoshop your double chin. You know, I'm not going to change it in any way. And it's my job to make you look flattering in those in those situations. But it's more about the the moment and the emotion. And I think there's a certain type of person that wants to to look like a model, and then there's a certain type of person that wants to just remember how life really was. And those are those are my kind of people. 
That's cool. Now, I, we I alluded to the fact that your images have a warmth about them. And obviously, at least part of that has to do with your editing style. How did you land on this particular look and feel and style? I think I've already, I've always had like a high contrast look, even with my sports photography. I've just always been really attracted to that. And I want to give a shout out to India Earl. Everyone knows who she is. She's amazing. Um, Chewy Rodriguez. He, yeah. if you don't know who Chewy is, go look up his work. He's the king of steam. He is the reason I started shooting couples naked. I was like, yes, absolutely. That's what I want. I'm trying to Chewy photo, uh, C-H-U-Y dot photo. He's amazing. And uh, we already talked, We, me and you talked about Larkin Kendall. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's incredible. But they all have like a similar look, just that, you know, a little bit deeper hues besides the greens. I love to mute my colors just a little bit. That high contrast, I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how to say I got into that. It's, it's just always been what I thought looked good and mm. what I wanted to stick with. And I've definitely had, you know, we're always going to experience some creative pushback when you fall outside just kind of the normal or not normal, but, you know, classic, just bright, airy look. But as you, I think you'll find that it, it just comes, you'll find people that appreciate your style as you continue to, to just do your thing. Well, and so your your clients, your potential clients see this work online and they come to book you. How how do you go about setting the expectation? I mean, you're displaying your work already online. So maybe this question kind of answers itself. But how do you set the expectation appropriately for these couples coming to you that this is the type of session we're going beyond just standing there looking at the camera and smiling and taking a picture like we're going to go deep with this. How do you create that expectation and set the tone for the session accordingly? Yeah, I mean, obviously, my my couples looking at my portfolio know probably what I'm going to prompt them to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think it's more just authenticity on my end. Really, I'm I'm pretty goofy and I'm I'm weird, um, and I just <laughs> that out. I stopped fighting that a long time ago, and I think when my couples realize that I'm just like them then they tend to relax a little bit. So solid communication also. Meeting them ahead of time, I usually, like, especially if it's in their house, I'll go to their house like a good 20 minutes ahead of time. I don't even break my camera out. Just talk, look around the house, have a drink. If they don't drink, you know, bring other beverages. Or, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. humans love to connect over food and drink. We just do. I think that, I think at least part of that is it like it gives us something to do so we don't have to fidget. You know, like, yes. I, I love that scene in, um, in Goodwill Hunting where Matt Damon's character, he's like, what he, he speaks to the kind of the arbitrary nature of getting together for drinks or getting together for coffee. He's like, why don't we do that with caramels? Um, and, and I thought it was a, kind of a brilliant observation, which is like, <laughs> this is so arbitrary that we say, hey, can we meet for drinks? And it does, it gives us something to do with our hands because as we're sitting there engaging with somebody that we don't know, we don't have to fidget because now we're holding this glass. I don't know, maybe I'm just speaking from personal experience, but it is a funny thing. Well, yeah. And then of course, alcohol plays its own. Oh know, yeah, for sure. Loosening agent. Um, I definitely do have couples that are, they're sober they don't drink. Um, and we have other ways of just loosening up. Like you said, music is a really great way. Um, but mostly just really diving into who I am and like letting them know that this is going to be fun. It's going to be awkward for a little bit and then it's going to be just a blast and they're not going to, they're not going to know what hit them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and catering to their personalities, obviously. Um, that's the big one. Hmm. Don't ever ask your couples to do anything that, you know, is not their norm. Like I just shot a baking that, you know, there's a couple on my Instagram, a couple posts back that they're just holding each other in their kitchen. They're covered in flour. I literally have that one pulled up right now. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, they're, oh gosh, they were so much fun, Eve and Ian. So I asked them, like, you know, what what do you guys do? What's what's your thing? And she's like, I don't know, we work full time. Like, we don't have a thing. And I'm like, you have a thing. Like, what do you guys do? She's like, well, we just remodeled our house and we, like, we cook together. We don't eat out a lot. And I'm like, that's perfect. Don't even say anything else. Yeah. So I show up at their house and I look at their kitchen and it's super cute. And I'm like, yeah, great. Pull out some, we're going to make cookies. Like, pull it out. Let's do that. <laughs> And, you know, and you, you know, you curate that as a photographer, I, you know, I tell them what to do and I tell them to throw flour at each other. Um, but it's based around something that's really true for them. Okay. But I have to ask though, too, like, how do you, and I know that we're kind of jumping around, but, but that's totally fine. We're, I, I, we see all these images where your, your 
couples, your subjects are halfway, partway, all the way naked. And this particular scene, again, it's an absolutely stunning image. The couple, as you described, are in their kitchen. They've got flour kind of different parts of their bodies they're they're making out i mean it's it's an awesome awesome image but how do you go from hey we're making cookies to suddenly you're naked and embracing with flour all over you yeah so obviously we didn't start there they started clothed i usually encourage them to wear you know something they'd actually be wearing in home okay you know, pajamas so when we started off she was they were just both in tank tops and like you know shorts you know, pajama shorts. And then as the session progresses and they get more comfortable, also we were drinking tequila. That always helps. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) I start to ask them, you know, like, how are you feeling? You feeling comfortable? They're like, yeah, absolutely. We're loving this. I'm like, great. How do you feel about taking your shirt off? And then I explain to them my vision. That is a huge part of it. So being able to explain to them like where we're taking this where we're going with this. These are the images I'm trying to create. And I'll pull up even other photographers work on Instagram and show them what I'm trying to do or the vision Mm. that I have. And that usually puts people at ease. They know where we're heading with this and it's not just going to be, you know, boobs and whatever hanging out. (laughs) Yeah. But, but do you, I mean, is this happening, that type of communication literally happening during the session as opposed to ahead of time or is it a combination of both? Oh yeah, no, it's usually during the session. I don't like to give because I don't like to give too much of an expectation ahead of time, hmm. especially if I don't get to know my couples. Like I have couples out of state that I don't get to meet face to face. I don't get to know them super personally. So I have to do all that in the moment. You have to do that very quickly and get them to trust you very quickly, which is mostly just opening yourself up, I think. So yeah, in the moment I am talking to them, uh, checking in with them constantly. How are you feeling? Do you feel comfortable? And you know, usually the answer is Yes. And from there, you just suggest things. How do you guys feel about taking your shirt off? I'd love to get a shot like this where you're embracing her, your backs are exposed. We'll move around like that. Depending on how comfortable the couple is, I will turn around. A lot of couples don't mind so much. Girls girls have a thing. We've all seen boobs. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal, right? Um, no big deal. Especially when we start to get really naked, I will usually suggest to them like hey this is the shot i'm going for i'm gonna turn around you guys take your clothes off you know get into this specific position and then i will turn around yeah and then you know obviously it's we're all adults from there you know if if it doesn't if nothing stays completely covered it you know that's more on my couples to communicate with me if they you know are uncomfortable at any given time um but usually at that point they're they're, they're naked. I'm taking photos. We're doing the thing. <laughs> That's so great. Now, do you, do most of them have the expectation going into a session again? I mean, you've done a wonderful job of putting the type of work out there that you want to photograph. So they have an idea of what you do. Do most of them go into a session with the expectation that eh, we're going to probably get at least halfway naked in this? Oh gosh. I think at this point, yeah, like you, you put that work out there and then so people seek you out for that work, which is every photographer's goal, right? Yeah, like that's 100%. why you find your ideal couple and then you start doing styled shoots and you, you know, you curate what you're actually trying to shoot. But saying that, I definitely still have couples that don't want to take their clothes off and I never ever force that or make them feel silly or dumb. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you don't want to take your clothes off. That's If they're not comfortable with that, and it's usually like a body image issue, which is totally fine. Sure, Girls don't want to take their shirts off because they they don't feel totally comfortable in their skin. And at that point, that is on me to make them feel comfortable and to feel sexy. And that's usually when I'm making huge jokes like you're a tiger, damn you're sexy. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And you, you get them laughing and you get them, you know, thinking about anything other than the fact that they're, you know, less than less than ideally clothed and um all of a sudden you're 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 just doing it right does that does that environment and inc- just naturally encourage laughter because of the semi or even total awkwardness or do you do you give them certain cues to get them laughing or ways that they can tease each other that type of thing oh yeah i'm hilarious you can't double that <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm really not that funny my boyfriend's super funny Yeah, I've definitely spent a lot of time coming up with prompts. That is something that all photographers should do. Mm. Take take the time to come up with your own unique prompts that that get couples connecting to you and to themselves. But yeah, I mean, it's really just going with it in the moment. Like if there's a lull, 
where, you know, the moment has passed. I need to kind of look at my prompts list and, and figure out where to take it next. But I, I'm usually actually really surprised by how my shoots just kind of flow from one thing to another. And then, yeah, as, as you get more experienced and you go on, you, you just naturally have more ideas. You become more comfortable in the moment and you don't have that like photographer beginner panic that we all have when we first start off. Um, I call it test brain. Yeah, there is. Well, I like the idea of flow. And it, and it seems like, I mean, one of the things I wanted you have, to have you do is kind of break down the steps of your process, but it seems very intuitive, very natural. Um, you, you set the tone with your personality, conversation, a couple of drinks, and, and then you just slowly work into it all. And, and it, I mean, it just makes sense. I think, I think the, a, a lot of the question that photographers listening in might have would be, how do I, how do I go from um, taking the the quote typical photo of a couple to doing something this intimate, like how do I make that leap? Is it is it a gradual process, or do you just go all in one day? Do you do you go out seeking a couple that is interested in that type of portraiture and use them to build your portfolio? What does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. The last one. Okay. Um, I think you jump all in. I think for me, it was this very, you know, this moment of realization, realizing like, yeah, I want to shoot naked couples, not in this very intimate setting. It really, I connect with that. I'm, you know, it, it means something to me. And then you curate that. So looking for couples that, and working for free, you might not get paid for these things right away. Sure. Finding couples that, especially for me, having tattooed couples, um, I'm heavily tattooed and not that that's important, but curating to that specific niche group of people was mm. important to me because I think it is it, it does attract a certain kind of tribe and I am looking for those those kinds of people so I figured out who my ideal client was and I started looking for those couples and you set that expectation you know right away and I've had dinner with multiple people ahead of time you know you have to give your your time into these situations for these client these people to trust you mm -hmm. so having dinner with them ahead of time letting them get to know you talking about how the shoot is going to be what your expectations are taking your creative vision into it explaining to them like hey I have this idea for you guys to be baking together and you know eventually it's just going to get messy and I'm going to destroy your kitchen. And, and <laughs> oh that's that's really really good though. I I think this is it's good food for thought for our listeners too because there may be again just a, that question of how do I make this happen in the end and and maybe even an assumption that it is complicated and it's going to take all this time. The reality is you can just take the initiative and go out and connect with the people that that fit that look and that are looking for something that you offer. And it, ultimately, maybe it is a few free sessions in order to build up your portfolio. Then you start putting that work out there. You create the expectation that this is what your brand is about. And it makes it so much easier after that. The, the photo that we were talking about a second ago with a couple baking um, in their kitchen, this was just from a couple of days ago. So this has been February 10th. Just for those of you listening in, if you want to go back and, and look in the Instagram feed and see, see that. But I do have one, uh, an, another question about uh, yet another post from five days ago. So I guess this would be February 7th. Um, there's a slideshow that you put together, this couple in the bathtub. Talk to us a little oh, yeah. bit about the progression for that particular shoot, what that looked like, like how it started and then it progressed to the tub. So that was actually a couple, I photographed their elopement back in October. So I had that going for me. I already knew them. Yeah. Um, we'd already spent a very intimate time in Moab uh, camping and shooting their amazing wedding, wow. uh, small intimate wedding that was, yeah, my, absolutely my ideal client, yeah. just beautiful. And then, so I reached out to them saying like, Hey, do you guys want to do a honeymoon session? Um, you guys are, you know, we, we know each other, let's, let's shoot. Um, and I want to do it this, you know, I need more naked couples. And they were like, yeah, absolutely. Wow. So I, for that, I had a vision. I had just a unique theme that I wanted to put onto it, which was the bathtub and more so the bubbles. I found this bubble gun at Michael's that I was just way too excited. About. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, yeah. More than I'd like to admit. And it, yeah, it, it, I brought that champagne. Usually I'll try to cater it a little bit more to the couples than just a bottle of champagne. It seems maybe a little bit overplayed, but it definitely works as far as just getting them excited, you know, shake it, pop it, make a mess, 
and um, the whole time I'm just like holding the camera with one hand and blowing bubbles with the other. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's literally sp- like the, the champagne is spraying into the image uh, just beautifully. And in, in one of those images, you have the backlight. It looks like from the the window there in the bathroom. But it's it's a it's an intimate portrait session, but it's also just incredibly fun and, and feels very very natural too. All all simultaneously, and it's beautiful that you're able to capture all of that in in that session. So you have to bring. I guess what I what I'm leaving out, what I'm realizing that I'm leaving out in all of this explaining is that you have to bring that energy. Huh. So of course I tell them, okay, I'm gonna, you know, leave the bathroom for a second, get naked, get in the tub, and let me know when you're ready. When I come back into the bathroom, I'm 100% bringing that energy, the energy that I want them to have, hmm. um, which is excited. Yep. I give them a prompt to carry out, which is okay look at each other, shake the shit out of that bottle yeah. and then pop it and yeah. just go wild. Um, <laughs> and it's usually something more specific, like give them something to really imagine, like, you know, show me what it looks like to win the lottery or something like that. Okay. But really carrying that energy. There's always this moment where you give a couple of prompts and it's the energy is so real for like two or three seconds, but mm. then it kind of dies yep. very naturally. Yeah. And it's so our job to keep that energy going, um, which is usually just me yelling. Um. <laughs> I love that. But you know, this is so great. And I think a, a great way to kind of sum up our conversation too, because ultimately, as you're, as you're talking about that, and I'm, I'm considering your work here, it's very obvious that you take this, I mean, this is a very real concept to you that you are truly bringing an energy to these portrait sessions that is reflected in your couples. And I, I think about how, you know, the difference between the way that even the way that I engage my kids, I have a 17 and, and almost 14 year old. And there are days when I'm off for whatever reason and I engage, I engage them accordingly. And you can see that reflected in the way that they respond to me. The flip side of that is if I am, am engaging them in a, in a fun loving, humorous, or just very en- generally energetic way, their response in that is going to be different. And that's just my kids. I mean, this holds true for personal relationships across the board, certainly um, clients and, and business relationships. And it's a really good reminder that ultimately it really is largely on us to create the right atmosphere for a session, particularly like this. And part of that certainly is setting the mood, managing expectations, maybe bringing a drink or two, but ultimately it's our attitude, our energy that we carry that will make such a massive difference. And and your images are a beautiful reflection of that. So I, I really can't thank you enough for making time to to share your perspective and insight into what these sessions look like. Will you share just one more time where our listeners can find you online so they can follow what you do? Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's Jackson takes photos.com and same thing for my Instagram, Jackson takes photos. And then on Facebook, you can find me at Heather Jackson photography and video. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. This is, I, this has been so much fun for me. I really appreciate you making time to share with the book of podcast mm-hmm. listeners. Yeah. Nathan, thanks so much for having me on. This was really awesome. Thanks so much for listening to the Boca podcast today. We let us know what you think by leaving a review of the podcast in iTunes or maybe in the Apple podcast app. And I'd love to hear from you personally with your thoughts about the podcast, maybe suggestions about future topics and guests for the show. My direct email is Nathan at photographers edit.com. The Boca podcast is brought to you by photographers edit custom image editing for the wedding and portrait photographer. Just visit photographers edit.com.